this is Oral Stories. Welcome to Fast Track to 40. Like anything real, Fast Track to 40 has adult themes presented in adult language. Listener discretion is advised. And a good beverage is encouraged. From Oral Stories, Fast Track to 40, Episode 3. We've got to leave in 15 minutes if I'm going to make my flight. Why did you let me sleep so late? (sighs) First of all, it's 4.30 a.m. Second of all, I told you to pack your clothes last night. You always do this, Janet. Well, you're supposed to remind me not to do this. I do, and you ignore me and do your own thing, so we wind up with panic packing and the mad rush to the airport every time. (sighs) It's a terrible, horrible, bad habit, and I know I say I'll change and... Why are you so calm? Because we always manage to make it to the airport on time. And I packed your underwear, makeup, and travel body stuff already. Oh. You got me. Yes, I got you. Deep breath. Okay. Dump those clothes in the suitcase, zip it up, get your shoes on, and let's go. And you have my presentation? I got all the paperwork from your desk, your laptop, Fully charged, and a power pack for phone. Oh, oh, this is a new one. You can recharge your laptop and your phone at the same time. I'm glad one of us is a gearhead. Janet, let's go! Right already. I still have three minutes. Okay, let me see. There's my app. There's my boarding pass. Once again, right on time. You know, your on time is ridiculously close to late. God bless pre-check. Nothing but short lines, shoes on, and straight to business class boarding. (laughs) Text me when you're at the hotel, okay? Will do. See you in three days, babe. Uh, Janet? What? Think you'll miss me? That's a silly question. Of course I'll miss you. Why do you ask? I've just been thinking a lot about us. You know, where we are. As a couple. Dan, now? You're talking about this now. Sorry. It's been on my mind a lot since... Yesterday's argument. Yeah. I'll miss you when you're gone. Dan, I love you. Good. Because I love you too. All right, go catch your plane. On it. I do love you. (laughs) I know. (laughs) We'll talk when you come back, okay? (sighs) Is it 5.30 a.m. or am I in hell? Get over it, Clarity. The sun's up somewhere. Oh, hell, it is. Good morning, sunshine. Why the fuck are you calling me? I need to talk to someone, and Penny sleeps like she's drugged. The bitch is so blessed. Spill, are you still worried about this meeting? Yes, but now I'm worried about something else. Janet, aren't you supposed to be on a plane right now? My travel mojo stays strong. Here on time, and the plane is delayed. So breakfast in the lounge, and I get to bend your ear a little. The least you could do is send me some coffee. Doing it in spirit. We had a rough two days, Clarity. You and Dan? You've had your fights before. You guys have lasted longer than most marriages. I'm sure you'll make up. We've gotten better about talking it out. You should be. You guys have been together almost a decade. But we never seem to resolve our issues. We hardly ever fight, but when we do, it's always about the same thing. I'm surprised. You two seem like you're in sync all the time. Everything seems okay, and then bam. I'm blindsided by the same old issue where Dan feels left out or unequal or something, and I'm confused about how he's not being included in my life. 
Oh, honey, relationships are never easy, especially the ones that look easy. <sighs> look at you. Is this Penny or Clarity I'm talking to? Huh. I still remember a few things from my last time in coupledom. I see. Clarity, you guys were perfect too, and then you weren't. Over a decade. Then you broke up. Did you know things were going wrong? Wow, asking real questions way too early in the morning. I... I guess I need some reassurance. Or advice. You were never one to talk about what happened. True. It was part of the problem. (laughs) Not talking about things that bothered me, not being listened to when I finally said things weren't working. Walker and I fit together so well that we never learned that comfort doesn't mean you've got good communication. Until we had to end it. That's what I'm afraid of. That I'm missing what he's saying to me. What he needs. JJ, I will have your back to hell and back again. I will slay dragons for you because you are my friend. But you know my rule about relationships. You can talk to me, but the solution is talking to your partner and or therapist. Maybe it's time to stop coasting on compatibility. I get it. I miss fitting with someone. Like it's a limb. I didn't know. I don't talk about it. Why would I? But I miss it. You still have it. You and Dan are good together. Don't lose it, Janet. You can do something now, so listen. Take action. Clarity. Yeah? How about you talk to your girls when you feel this way? We're here for you. (laughs) Bring up my failings, why don't you? I'm serious. I can count on one hand the amount of times you've called me about something emotional. Don't take this the wrong way. Because it's totally not you guys. I learned a long time ago that I couldn't get those emotional needs met. I'm working on it, though. You work on that, and I work on my crap. Deal. (sighs) Can I go back to bed now? Yeah. Love you. Sweet dreams. Uh, wait. How's the writing going? Oh. Oh my god, when you come back do I have a story for you. I went speed dating. (laughs) Jesus, Mary and Joseph, you? Was this Penny's idea? Uh, It's too early for me to drink. I wish I had been drunk. It would have been a great excuse, but no. Stone cold sober decision. (sighs) Talk to me later, JJ. I love you too. Travel safe. Bye. A lot to think about. Let's see, another hour for my plane. How about something besides coffee? Waiter! Prosciutto and leek strata and the eggnog tiramisu, please. Penny, I want to finalize this week's topics and guests. Pass me the croissants. Love our little breakfast meeting traditions. (laughs) Because you know I pay for it. Hmm. Hmm. We have the mama worried about her trans daughter meeting the right person for tomorrow. Richard, I'm going to see if Amber and Tony are free to guess with me for that. Sounds good, Penny. I fixed the patch in after that last hiccup. Oh, great. I can't stand it when the line keeps dropping. Only so much we can do on our end when people are calling in from Arupa. Fair. Next week, next week... Didn't I have an event next week? We are on location at Pink Paddles to discuss BDSM club etiquette with Roger. Nice. Not an event, a location interview. An excuse to wear a corset. What do you need? Just needed to sign the contract for our mobile production vendor and send the deposit. Sounds good. How did the singles night go? Mmm, fun, at least for me. I had a friend come, and based on her dragging me into the bathroom for a little yelling session, less fun for her. You're a sex therapist, not a matchmaker. What? You think I can't put together a good match for her? No offense, boss, but you're single. I can't believe you work for me with an attitude like that. Sex isn't just about committed relationships, is it? I never saw you as being about permanent relationships, more about successful sexual health. Interesting, Richard. 
I guess you being in a serious relationship gives you that perspective. I broke up with Mangali, uh, wow, four months ago. Oh, I liked her. She was really sweet, very pretty. You broke up? You are great on the show. Your callers get an empathetic ear to all their problems. How do you not know I split with my girlfriend? Part of keeping things professional with each other means not getting too involved in your personal life. We're around each other for hours, five, sometimes six days a week. I realized that once I worked with a guy that did a true crime show and one thing led to another, <laughs> we wound up sleeping with each other. No, a showman's? Not gonna deny it. He was cute, smart as hell, and there was so much attraction going on. It, it turned weird after a couple of weeks. Found out later that he had a rep for doing that. Ouch. I learned my lesson the hard way. I appreciate you keeping things fun, but professional. Even if you miss the fact that I'm dealing with heartbreak. You don't seem very heartbroken to me. It was really mutual. She wanted commitment, kids, vegetarianism. I like steaks, iffy on kids. <laughs> kids and steaks, the titanic of relationships. Is that why I'm fun? Is it the jokes? You work me hard, but this is a good environment for me. Hold it. You're not trying to set me up with your friend, right? Because, no. What, me? No, I like helping people figure out what they want. Keeping the relationships they have, making things interesting. I tried a committed relationship myself and it didn't make me happy. See, that's why I wouldn't come to you for advice on how to not be single. At least, how not to be permanently single. Oh, it's the ones closest to you that wound you the most. You asked, boss. I did. But you're so honest. Can't you lie like most sensible people? You pay me for expertise and due diligence. Lying is extra. See, this is why I keep you around. Hey, what time is it? It's 10.18 a.m. Why? Oh, I have an appointment at 11. Let me get going. Why don't I call Amber and Tony about tomorrow then? That way you can take off for your appointment without fear you'll forget. You are amazing. Thank you. I know. Showtime is at 3. Be back by 2. Got it. Between the humiliating paper gown, the frigid temperatures, and the super high examination tables, doctors really go that extra mile to make you uncomfortable in their offices. I, I can't even put on my bra. Just tatas on parade here. Hello, Miss Eisenstein. What brings you in today? Hey, Dr. Ping. It's that time of year where you gaze deeply into my cervix, swab me for laughs and cells, and tell me how my vagina's doing. <laughs> Penny, I can't say I don't enjoy your annual checkup visits, but before we start, any questions for me? No, no. I know the drill. You get the headlamp, I'll get the stirrups. What can I say? I like working with a pro. All right, Penny. Open wide. Aw, I bet you say that to all the girls. And some of the boys. <laughs> Hold still, you're shaking your cervix. I usually charge for that. <laughs> okay, I give up. One more second and got it. Let me put this away. And with that swab goes my prayers for a healthy checkup. Amen. Uh, Dr. Ping. Yes? I, I do have a couple questions. Uh, well, yeah. Shoot, if I can answer them. I, I've been thinking about having children. I mean, I'm 38. Oh, I didn't take you for a big biological clock person. <laughs> Neither did I. I'm happy with my life, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized I want someone to share it with. Do you have a partner? Are they looking to have children? Oh, no, no, no. Not, not in that way. My relationships are casual. I like the freedom, but my urges are more about mothering than being a wife. It sounds to me like you're very clear on what you want and how you feel. So this must be about potential fertility issues. Uh, there's some scarring on the uterus from that IUD infection when you were younger. Oh. I'd hope that it cleared up by now. Hold on. It doesn't mean you can't get pregnant and carry a child to term. Dr. Ping, I've... I've had two miscarriages. I wasn't trying to get pregnant, but I did. And I don't know if it was the IUD or bad luck or just a twisted form of fate because I wasn't really ready to be a mother and the fact that I was so... Irresponsible showed it. Yet here I am, 15 years later, wondering if that was my chance. 
Penny, you're healthy. You take good care of yourself. And you have great insurance. Nothing's out of the question. This is a number to a fertility specialist that's part of the network. There. I've input the recommendation so the suits don't give you any trouble. Thank you, Dr. Ping. Amanda. You can call me Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> You're welcome. I just get to be invited to the baby shower. I love a good party with cake. Oh, you got it. <sighs> Finally back home. Best decision I ever made buying this place. In vino, ver... Mm, no, no. Not much veritas, but a whole lot of relaxation. Here's to working for yourself. Let's see. What book am I reading tonight? There we are. Next month, we're looking at spirituality and kink. Kosher sutra it is. And where's my note? Ah, there it is. Now to put my little robot assistant to work. Hey, Bob. Play Chill Mood Mix, please. I like how you said that. Playing now. Hello? Hey, Miss P. Sup? What's happening, Princess Claire? I feel the need for some human conversation. I've been chained to this desk for hours. How's the writing going? I've gotten a few pages. In fact, I've gotten a few pages over and over and over again. The fact that I keep erasing them and starting over again is immaterial. Going great. Uh, distract me from my failures. I haven't heard from you all day. I even spoke to Janet at the airport this morning, and she's usually in a mad rush to catch her flight. Airport? Her flight was pretty early. Was something wrong? I'm surprised she didn't call you. Her flight was delayed, so I was graced with a 6 a.m. call. She and Dan are having a thing. A thing? A big thing, like help me move it's over thing, or a little we both ate too much sugar thing? And I really can't tell because it's between Janet and Dan thing. You know that sometimes they have some couple friction. It blows over in their back. I have faith in them. Uh-huh, uh-uh. I'm an agnostic. I should call her and see if she's alright. I don't want her thinking I'm ratting her out to you. It's not ratting out, we're besties. Yes, but she called me and I don't want her to think I'm a blabbermouth. Blabbing to me is part of our friend dynamic. She should know that. <laughs> Let her call you. You know she will. This is our time. And if I know you, you're lounging in your pajamas with a big glass of Beaujolais and either reading or watching the latest soapy drama you're obsessed with on TV. Nailed it. But I sense that there's more to this line of inquiry, so spit it out, Clarity. The speed dating didn't go that great. Oh, you're too kind. It was a disaster. Right. And, uh, and if it was up to me, I wouldn't ever do it again. Oh, ho. Oh. I think I know what this is, but I have to hear it from your mouth. Go on. <sighs> I've decided to take everyone's advice and go out to one of the local clubs to try to meet people. Don't gloat. I can hear the smug over the phone. This is a full admission that I need help. A wing woman. Whatever. Because... Going by myself. <laughs> okay. I'm going to cut you off right there to protect you. Just tell me when. I got you. Thank you. Tomorrow night? Yes, tomorrow night. I'll be over around 9.30 or so. Okay, I'll be ready. No. No, 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 no. This time, Mama's in charge. Ah, uh, fine. This is going to be so good. Finally. Wasn't a bad flight, even with all the delays, but all travel is exhausting. Bed feels so good. Damn it. Forgot to take my phone off airplane mode. Dan. Okay. Gotta call him. Penny and Clarity. Clarity, you snitch. I was gonna call Pen anyway. Shit. Gary. Why is my boss texting me? I'm gonna break into the mini bar before I read this. Mr. Jack, meet Miss Diet Pepsi. Let's make some beautiful music together. 
Nice to relax and be country AF. No snobby wine or microbrews. Not until tomorrow's round of lunches and dinners. <sighs> now, let's see what Boss Boy wants. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, flight was good. Yes, of course I have the research brief included in my presentation. Okay. Changes to the sales figures. Fine. I can change those tonight before I sleep. <gasps> what? Send you my presentation for edits? What are you up to, you overbearing creep? Damn it. I feel a knife handle in my back. You've been listening to Fast Track to 40, written and directed by Georgia McKenzie, produced by Camille Johnson, executive produced by Inia Fong, starring Katie Ritz as Penny Eisenstein, Heather Summers as Janet Jackson, Tony Jackson as Dan Owens and Rod, Courage as Richard, and other voices by the cast, music composed by John Ruder, sound design and editing by Alexa Ruvalcaba, and recorded at Shane Salk Productions in Hollywood. Like and subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss the next episode. Or visit us at oralstories.com. Check out Bonnie Screws Up and Upper River, other podcasts from Oral Stories.